happy uh, February Friday, the first Friday in February, which is always a great start. So this is week four in our winter knit along called Let's Hyper Knit. And um, for those of you who were not following along for the last four weeks, we went through the choice of choosing a project for hyper knitting um, state. So we had Tree Hugger Cardigan as one of the contenders, the uh, Felix Top Town Pullover as another one, and then also the Felix Cardigan, which is not shown here because I figure if I knit up the pullover, I really don't need to knit up the cardigan. They're identical except for the front border. And then the last choice was Briona's sweater, which is Fair Isle across the yoke, but knit from the bottom up. So this one incorporated stranded technique, um, grafting at the underarm, and short rows across the back to lift the back neck up a little bit. Tree Hugger is mainly about simple texture, uh, seaming, little side vents to make it uh, more roomy and relaxed, and a tiny bit of decreasing, not much. No short rows on that one. And then this one had some short rows and um, completely seamless and a pretty little eyelet raglan design. And I had some, some fun doing um, dress up today. So I borrowed a few pieces from our lovely vintage store in front of the building years ago go. So I put a, a new outfit, a sleeveless dress here and a long sleeve. Uh, patchwork dress here and then I styled it with our twiggly scarf shawl shawlette or scarf which has that nice self-closing twiggly leaf pattern here so I'll just go over some of the last um, helpful tips that might get you to the finish line some of you have already posted your finished projects on our event page have a look over there and uh, you'll see two different Felix versions. Felix version in this pretty, I think it was in the Cranberry by Cindy. It's all finished. She's just going to block it. And um, Theoko did her Felix card, no, she did Felix pullover in the, the pretty dark blue in the Shetland worsted. And uh, she incorporated some of the lace design work into the front of the yoke as well. That's very advanced and um, congratulations for trying that on your own. Hi Janet. Thank you. It's a cozy that It's a real oldie too. So um, tree hugger, if you're finished the pieces, you will not be blocking the pieces until it's seamed together. I know a lot of patterns do stress to block pieces first to the uh, schematic size or the measurements in the pattern, but you really want to seam your project together first, so in your ends, nice and neat, and um, then you would be ready to block it. You want those seams that are going to feel a bit bulky on the inside to be nicely pressed down to with the blocking. So really all this one needs is a light, wet, um, damp towel over top of it. So I would just lay this one out on a countertop or a table, make sure that the sleeves are out straight and that you have no ripples or wrinkles in it as flat as possible. And then I put a wet bath towel over top of it, make sure it's not dripping. You really have to squeeze out the moisture and then I leave it overnight and take the towel off. That way you can sort of shape it while it's damp to give it a bit more width if you need it or a bit more length. The yarn is super soft and it does have a lot of body in it. This is our Muskoka Yarn Goddess uh, woodland base and it's all natural with um, mainly merino and baby alpaca. So it doesn't need to be soaked and pinned and uh, aggressively blocked. Unless of course you're very tight knitter, but you would have done your gauge by now. So uh, the other three choices, which are knit in the Echo Shetland Worsted, that's a pure organic wool, they should be blocked the traditional way, which is soaking the garment 
and you'll notice a big difference. You can see the stitching just lies super smooth and the stitches are a little bit more filled in, less airy gaps in between them. So it's really worth it if you've never blocked a garment before by soaking it in our choice, which is the Eucaland Canadian Wool Wash. I'm sure you're going to say, why haven't I blocked all my things for the last 10 or 20 years? It's also what we use to wash all our hand knits in. But um, for this purpose, we would just finish sewing in the ends on either your Helix or your Brioni. And then we would put in just a capful of the liquid into a basin of water, room temperature water, not cold, not too hot, and then soak the sweater for 20 minutes. Make sure that you squeeze the sides in so that it's really absorbed into the wool fibers. And after 20 minutes or 30 minutes, whatever you like, take it out, put it in a giant bath towel, and squeeze that towel by rolling it, stepping on it, pounding on it with your fists, whatever you can do just to get the excess moisture out. If it's too wet, then it will stretch out in the blocking process and it'll end up being too long or too wide. So try to minimize the amount of moisture that's in it and because it's wool it does soak in the, the water and the moisture and then all you have to do is shape it out on a flat surface there's no pinning required you could just use your hand you don't need to put a towel on top you just let it air dry and generally the air will go through um, overnight and then you should turn it over to the reverse side so the air can circulate and get through on the other side so you have a nice dry sweater in about um, probably one to one and a half days. This yarn, because it has an air um, air flow at its core, it will dry quicker than a much denser wool. So then they'll be ready to wear. Um, we're going to go over a correction for Brioni, just in case you missed it on the event page. So for anyone who's knitting Brioni, one of our uh, knitters, Kate, our community of knitters, discovered there was a little error in chart number two. So I'm going to bring it up to the camera and then you can see where the correction needs to be made. It's um, not something that I noticed and I knit the whole yoke without realizing it, but um, it takes a knitter with a very fine eye. So. You can see this is chart two, the big chart which is used for the yoke, and there's a 12 stitch repeat. So the um, tech editor who was making up the chart for this, this design made a small boo-boo, and at the beginning of round two and round four, he or she put the wrong color square. So I've just changed the color in the way it should be. So if you make a note on your chart to add a white square to the very first stitch on round two, then that will give you the proper Feral design. And then also on the beginning of round four, the very first stitch should be darkened. So that will stand for the main color. So we're starting with one stitch in the main color in round four. And on round two, we should be starting with uh, one stitch of the contrast color. It's a very small little correction to make and if you're past the point I wouldn't bother uh, ripping it back because it's really not noticeable. It's just that we are perfectionists as knitters so it's good to get it right if at all possible. And then the other tip on Brioni, um, as you're finishing up your fair out, you're going to come to the final decrease round before you start the neckband. So some patterns will tell you how many stitches to knit and then where to decrease and then they'll just tell you to repeat across the row or the round. And some patterns like Brioni like you to figure it out for yourself. A little bit of math. So in this instance it's telling us to knit around, decrease, 30 stitches evenly, or 34, 38, oh, 
sorry, on the wrong page. Okay, it's telling us to um, knit the round and decrease 12 stitches for the small size or 20 or 22 or 24 or 26, depending on what size you're doing. And it gives us the finished number of stitches that we should have total. So when you're calculating that, it's best to use a calculator. And for instance, um, the second size, if we have to decrease 20 stitches and we have uh, 120 on the needle before we start decre decreasing, we just have to divide how many times 20 goes in to 120. So the answer should be six, I think. So that does not mean that we knit six and then knit two together as our decrease. That's going to end up with too many stitches left over at the end of the round and you're going to wonder why it didn't work out. So remember that when you're uh, taking 120 divided by 20 equals six. So six is the repeat. So that means you can only knit four stitches and then knit two together. So that's the four plus the two that you've knit together equals the six. So that's how the math should work out. And at the end of the round, your very last two stitches should be a decrease and you'll have the right number of stitches on the needle. So that will save you some time if you've wondered how it's done. So that really, I think, is the only tip that I haven't mentioned before on Brioni. You can, again, adjust the neckline. You'll have lots of yarn left over. This whole sweater took um, about 400 grams. So because we're using two colors, there's more yarn wasted, but you'll have lots of yarn if you want to do the stand-up mock neck, the turtleneck, the cow neck version. I mentioned that all last week. Or if you just want to double the height of this neckband and then flip it under and sew it to give it a little thicker look and probably something that looks more traditional to Farrell sweaters. There's really not much to change on Felix other than shortening or lengthening your sleeves as you go and shortening or lengthening the body. And you'll have lots of yarn to do that. And then this one, you can shorten or lengthen the body or the sleeves to adjust your body size. I think most people find that in general, the patterns are written for people with very long arms. So we do usually shorten our sleeves by one inch or up to two inches. Brioni could certainly have a little bit shorter sleeve. I find that with that extended cuff that on my long arms it's a bit uh, too long for me. So just take that into consideration. Um, I didn't double the neckline on this one Elizabeth but um, it's definitely an option that you might want to think about. It would make it a little bit warmer and it would have more stretch because remember when you're casting off a single neckline that just makes it a bit tighter and if it were double and stitched under along the base of the neckline then the folded over section would have plenty of stretch. So I think somebody will probably choose to do a double neckline on their Brioni. Um, okay, so as you know, we have a grand prize over here. We usually have something special for each of our knit alongs just to give us motivation and incentive. And this, um, this knit along prize has one of our Knit Smile Relax coffee mugs, coffee or tea, and then there is a project kit inside with the pattern and I think I can see a pretty little um, shawl pin or it could be a sweater pin. It would probably look really nice on a tree hugger as a closure too if you've knit that one. And then a Muskoka certified knitologist pin. So lots of cute little goodies in there. So we'll get right over to the draw. And then the other thing we've been doing is each week we've had a trivia question and a randomly picked winner had an extra ballot put into the draw bucket. We'll do the little drum roll to make it official. And hopefully the winner is 
winter's watching. Sometimes I think the winter doesn't watch until the evening, so. Okay, so we've got one little ticket here. And the winner for Let's Hibernate Grand Prize is Grace M. Do we have Grace M watching? I know she was watching live last week. Grace is working on Brioni, not in these colors, but um, if anybody knows Grace, maybe you can let her know that she, she is the winner. But we'll keep the prize here until we hear from you, Grace, and then we can arrange pickup or delivery somehow to your area. So I want to thank everybody for knitting along with us uh, again for our winter knit along. Um, Hope you've learned a few new techniques that you can either work out on your chosen project or use them in future projects. And we will be back in uh, probably late March and we'll come up with a nice spring knit along just to give everyone fresh inspiration as the weather changes and the season uh, makes us think about lighter weight garments and accessories. So enjoy your weekend. Just keep on hybrid knitting. I think it's um, going to be a cold weekend here. So again, that's what I'll be doing. And thanks everybody for watching.